Ahoy Grifters! Welcome back to the Grift Coat channel. This is an exciting video as we're going to go through my trials and tribulations of creating an aluminium deck without the special skill set of being able to weld aluminium. If I don't say so myself, I think the outcome is pretty spiffy. I'm sure many of you have seen on the tinny modification forums the use of the Bunnings extrusions and plastic connectors. And that's exactly what we used in this little project. Admittedly, we went a little bit further and made the deck totally out of aluminium. Sedora has been in my possession for a little over a year now. And as we can see, she's come a long way already. Dora has lived a life previously, showing off all of her bits. But now that she's 16 years old, it's time to cover all of that up. So let's get into it. The process started with a basic drawing. Whilst this drawing looks a little fancy, don't be daunted or feel you need to be this fussy. I enjoy drawing, and sketching out a plan made the build process way easier. Straight off the bat, there are limitations to using our Bunnings plastic connectors. We can only join our extrusions at right angles. Whilst not a debilitating limitation, it's one to keep in mind. As we're getting closer to the end of the design, it's worth mentioning that this wasn't set in stone and my plans did inevitably change. With that said, having a plan made it easier to understand how changes might affect the final result. Every good weekend should start with a trip to Bunnings or for my American friends, Home Depot. I know Bunnings is pretty expensive for aluminium, but it's so convenient and open at accessible times. With all my bits and pieces in hand, I didn't want to cut anything incorrectly. So I took my sweet ass time to measure everything out and I eventually still got a bunch of measurements wrong. But hey, this is all a big learning curve for everyone. Anyway, lucky for me, I was able to borrow a miter saw from my father-in-law, which has been invaluable. Using the angle grinder got me out of a bind previously, but this machine eats aluminium for breakfast. I started working my way through my cut list starting with one side and creating a small base. Cutting the extrusions with the miter saw ensured accurate and square cuts, which is critical for clean connections into the plastic joiners. An initial test fit spurred on exciting visions of how the deck was going to form. The bottom length of the frame spans across the flat mounting surface, providing a point to secure the frame into. With the plan in place and a clear vision, the rest was knocked up really quickly. Just a top tip to take home, make sure the assembly sequence is possible. It's easy to get excited and bang away into some aluminium, but it's also possible to snooker yourself. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking, hey Will, you're choking the hammer. No, I'm just being gentle. Though the connectors feel adequate, it is possible to be a little too forceful sending them into their new home. Once in, they're very snug and it's a delicate process to remove them. I was totally blown away by the weight of the frame. I expected it to be light, but maybe not 3.7 kilos light. I know this looks like the first test fitment, but this is likely the 10th. I wanted to make sure the frame could be easily removed if the need arose. I wouldn't call it easy, more uh, a doable experience. With a fresh set of eyes and a new day, it was clear the port side of the frame sat a little too proud. Progressively and gently tapping the mouldings from the extrusions, I could work my way to the uprights. To knock the extrusion out, I used some angle to protect the frame from the hammer blows. After the test fitment and measuring the base stick that needed to be removed from the extrusion, it was so easy to tune the height of the frame. Some gentle love taps later, and the frame is back in one piece. As much as I wish the boat was totally square, the rear fuel tank frame was a little skewed, which caused our problems. Of course, that tenth test fitment was worth every second. Without knowing the lifespan of the corners, I figured it would be smart to reinforce with some simple gussets. I did this for all of the outer corners, as well as installing a vertical gusset for the cantilevered extension. It was at this point I wondered if it would have been easier by riveting the whole thing and not using the plastic pieces. Maybe ask me in two years, but I'm not sure it really would have been. The square cuts and the clean finish made the process really easy. But with that said, I wish I had done this aluminium top deck differently. 
My concept of building a deck that's easily removable created some really challenging issues. Essentially, I want to cover the aluminium sheet with C-Deck later, but hide any hinges and hardware. Again, it's not an impossible task, but challenging with the jigsaw and shitty cutting skills. Using a strip of alley was our method to keep the line straight, but this jigsaw definitely wanted to wander. Clearance was needed for the motor cables, both at the stern and behind the console controls. To be able to secure the panel in place and make it removable required a little bit of finessing. To do this, we used a lot of rift nuts. The rift nuts work in a couple of ways. Firstly, by indexing the panel in place and also to provide a thread to pull the panel against the frame. A clearance hole inside the frame allows the body of the rift nut to pass through, providing a fixed panel thread. By going about it in this way, a screw can be easily inserted and removed from within the hatch with the door open. Although we use masses of rift nuts, sticking foam tape between the surfaces ensured there's less likelihood of rattling. Obviously there's no hatch yet. All that's needed was to cut it out from the main panel. The challenge of all of this was making a clean cut. Instead of drilling a hole, a grinder provided a wide enough curve to insert the jigsaw blade. Unfortunately, the length of the cut was limited by the rib nuts. A sliver of the panel held the two pieces together, but with some finagling with a hacksaw blade, the two pieces could be pulled apart. Now it's starting to look like we're getting somewhere. Instead of going through the same struggle on the second panel, I removed the rib nuts to make the cuts cleaner and easier. This also provided a convenient opportunity to change the rib nuts to a countersunk option to ensure a purely flat top surface. If you haven't got a rib nut tool, it's time to think about getting one. They are rad. Onto the hatch. With the panel cut out, it needs a lip to rest upon, otherwise it'd act more as a trapdoor. Some 25 by 25 aluminium angle provides masses of surface area and is very easy to cut and place into position. The gusset needed to be shortened slightly to account for the thickness of the angle, but it all went back together super nicely. Again, I probably went way overboard with the rivets, but I wanted to do this only once. In the end, the hatch sits flush with the outer panel, but all it needs now is a hinge. Now don't get excited guys, I suck at installing hinges. This sequence probably proves it. I tried a couple different ways to get the hatch to sit neatly, but again, my idea of a flush deck gets in the way of an easy process. Whilst the results weren't bad, I didn't like the gap that was present on the outside hinging edge. Oh well, we're onto the home stretch anyway. Placing these pull latches is a pretty simple process, but the challenge I wasn't expecting was dealing with the thin sheet aluminium and the thick grip range of the latch. What this essentially means is a shim is required between the inside of the hatch and the securing plate. I'm sure that would have made more sense had I shown you what I meant, but I haven't, so sorry guys. The hole required a little bit of TLC with a file and the latch popped straight in. I got pretty lazy by this point and decided to sicker flex the catch onto the frame, and it's honestly still holding to this day. With the frame going in for the millionth time, you can see the limitation of movement from the hinge design. Thankfully, there's still plenty of room to insert and remove the fuel tank. You guessed it, rift nuts were used again to secure the frame to the bench seat as well as the factory support. If you couldn't tell, I'm obviously a massive fan of roof nuts and you should be too. Now, by using countersunk screws, I gave myself the freedom to add a plate across the frame to secure the battery and the isolator switch. Now, all that needs to be done is to secure the top panels with screws. Access from the inside of the hatch and she is all finished. After two weekends of work, the journey was complete. Dora's stern can now boast a whopping 1.5 square meters of rear deck space. The 1.7 by 0.9 meter deck is entirely removable with all fasteners hidden from the top surface. The deck is sturdy and very ready to be covered in C-Deck. I'm 
sure you're all wondering how much it cost, and I can't precisely remember. The sheet metal cost around $220, but I really only used a third of a sheet. The extrusions and connectors probably cost me the most, some total around $300 from Bunnings. I'd unequivocally suggest going to an aluminium wholesaler instead of Bunnings. So this was an awesome project with limited tools, but now with more experience under my belt, I'm dreaming of how I might have done it a little differently. I'll run the deck as it is for now, as it's perfectly serviceable. If the plastic connectors break, you guys will be the first to know. Dora is changing fast, with heaps more coming to the channel very soon. Thanks again, please consider subscribing, stay tuned, and see ya.